guys. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Okay, so we're going to do, do this fast, fast paced. We're going to be done in about one hour. We have about 30 presenters, two minutes each. Those are the rules here. So maximum. Oh, I, I started really well, right? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Am I good? Okay, so um, here are the rules. Two minutes max, 30 seconds, you're going to get a warning. Then 10 seconds before you're about to finish, I'm going to start walking to you and eventually pull you out of the podium, <laughs> okay? That's the way it works. The next person over, so on the, on, the, on the board here, you can see your names. Asterisks are people that are not actually here in person, so either they left like a, a recording or a read whatever they gave me to present their own slides, okay? So, but the next person over, please be ready, already up here so we can just go through this flow together, okay? And no questions, which is the best part. <laughs> uh, and so as you see, the groups, there are two main groups organized by faculty on the left side, and we're mixing up the CSUMB and most landing faculty, which is awesome because they're all working together, and then the affiliated research groups on the right side, okay? Is there any question before we start? No question. No question. <laughs> but before we start, I'd like to uh, introduce you. Uh, no. Petra, I want to say a few words. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm super excited to be here at my first in-house open house. Um, when we did the all-hands meeting, it was really great to like see everybody brainstorm about what the most important parts of their experience was. Um, but I'm really excited about this because I feel like the CSU um, researcher educator model where people do research in collaboration with students is um, what I think is so strong and so amazing about the CSU and I don't think any place does that better than here at Moss Landing so so I'm super excited to hear about the research so that I can continue to figure out how to push forward and support all of your work and that's it all right thank you. Like that. thank you okay I start because of my last name and here we are, Geological Oceanography Lab. My name is Ivan Aiello, a marine geologist. Our motto is we look and we look at dirt, rocks, and dead stuff above and under the sea. It's copyrighted. So here's the Geo Lab. Myself as a lead faculty, I have four graduate students, Marcel Pelix, Rachel Clifford, Nalina Johnson, and Heidi Vasquez. One technician who's uh, um, Charlie Andrews, who's a GIS specialist, and special guest, uh, Dustin Carroll, Who's here today, I think. Yeah, there he is. Okay, so I have four current projects and working on uh, proposals for future projects. Two of them are in Elkin Sluice. We, we do a lot of work on uh, marsh restoration with a lot of collaborations here. And the, and the symbols denote which student is working on what. But essentially, we are, see, I need to look at the time because there's already one minute and 10 seconds. We are looking at, we are looking at how we can restore marshes to the original beauty and functionality by adding sediments. So we're looking at different ge geotechnical issues related to that. I also have a work on deep sea sediments, which is my main specialty. And Nalina and Rachel uh, have different projects on that. So we're looking at uh, deep sea uh, core sediments to, to, um, to uh, look at different uh, products within the, the sediments. And finally, we just got funded a, a coast grant to actually look at seafloor variability at the head of the canyon. Uh, during El Nino, actually, you can see in the map on the upper right, that's what uh, uh, Marcel Pelix generated for his thesis. That's actually the setup he created for the whaler. He's a great guy and is going to be defending very soon. And that's actually Nalina Johnson uh, here starring in the Research Foundation uh, uh, journal and uh, being really happy to play with the scan electron microscope. Thank you very much. Come and visit us. Uh, I'm Liz Alter, nice to see you all. I think I've met um, many of you, but not all. I'm one of the newer um, members of the Moss Landing community. I've been at Cal State Monterey Bay since 2020 in the biology and chemistry department. And I'm an evolutionary geneticist and population geneticist. Um, I have my first um, Moss Landing student, co-advisor Scott this year, Parker Malhotra, who many of you have met. Uh, and I also advise in the environmental science master's program at CSUMB. 
Um, so this is my beautiful lab. Um, we have a number of projects going on. The, um, the most uh, probably relevant of which for us today is a um, five-year NSF-funded project on rockfish diversification. So I'm looking at sort of a um, rockfish diversification holistically from several different angles, uh, doing a, a, a revised um, a revised phylogeny using genomic data, looking at speciation genetics, and then also examining morphological and color differentiation between species pairs. Um, the other thing I'll mention is that we have a number of ongoing environmental DNA projects, so if you're interested in that, um, please feel free to reach out to me. So we have students working on tide pools around here, and um, one student working on a project in the Pajaro River looking at how um, eDNA can be used to survey biodiversity to aid uh, restoration efforts there. And I think that's it. Oh, I just wanted to mention that I do teach a, um, a grad course that's at CSUMB, Molecular and College and Evolution, so heavily hands-on course where students do their own research projects um, using genomic tools. Thank you. Hey, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Tom Conley. I'm a physical oceanographer here. I teach physical oceanography, data analysis, as well as a number of other, uh, another number of other specialized class, classes here. Um, I lead the physical oceanography lab, and we look at processes at the intersection of ocean physics, marine ecosystems, and biogeochemical cycles. Um, we aim to inter increase interdisciplinary understanding of the ocean um, through research and outreach, and we use field observations, remote sensing, and numerical modeling, and we put a strong emphasis on open and reproducible science. Um, the projects that are currently uh, active in our lab, um, we have a number of coastal ocean observation stations in Monterey Bay um, that Steve Cunningham helps us uh, maintain through Sencus, and um, building on that, we have a new project with Mbari and other partners in the region the Synchro Co-Design Lab, which is aimed at integrating kind of more cutting edge technology into those uh, observing systems. We have a new project down at San Luis Obispo Bay, kind of a mini version of Monterey Bay, um, shown here on the, the right. Um, and we're starting field work there this summer and the following summer. And we're also looking at uh, hydrodynamics and erosion processes in, in Elkhorn Slough uh, locally. We also have student design research um, on a wide range of topics from local estuaries, internal waves, submesoscale sub dynamics, kelp forest hydrodynamics, uh, so keep an eye out for some uh, thesis defenses on those topics soon. Hi everyone, I'm Luke Gardner. I'm a, um, <clears throat> a research faculty here at Moss Landing Marine Labs, but I also have a dual appointment. I'm at uh, California Sea Grant as well as a aquaculture extension specialist. So, but if you guys have any questions about Sea Grant, I'm happy to um, happy to talk to you about that. Here at Moss Landing, um, I I do uh, basically applied research as it pertains to aquaculture. So it can be anything from policy down to good old fashioned bucket science. We have a a number of uh, different students and a, and a bunch of different techs that help us out with all these uh, various things around here. Some current projects, um, like I said, it's all applied. It's very varied. We feed seaweed to cows to see if we can uh, reduce the methane emissions. Um, we're doing kind of uh, uh, emerging species aquaculture, trying to um, see if we can work out the husbandry for things like purple hinge rock scallops, um, purple urchin ranching. Uh, abalone IMTA stuff, that's integrated multi-trophic aquaculture. We also do fish aquaculture, monkey face prickleback, um, uh, yellowtail work, and then uh, we do a lot of uh, restoration aquaculture as well with both Olympia oysters and white abalone. Um, other things we also do is like alternative feeds, try and take fish meal and fish oil out of feeds, and then something that just recently finished up was uh, trying to, um, to remove domoic acid out of Dungeness crabs. And Aquaculture, but yeah, if you've got any aquaculture questions or husbandry as it relates to organisms, happy to answer those. Thanks. All right, so we have Mike Graham who left a video message. Let's see if it's going to work.
Thanks, Ivano. Hi, everyone. I'm Max Grant. Uh, I'm the lead PI in the Chemical Oceanography Lab. Uh, we mainly work on nutrients and trace metals and uh, what controls their distributions and impacts on primary productivity uh, in the marine environment, so both coastal regions and the open oceans. Uh, and in recent years, at least since I got here, we've been mainly focused on trying to develop some new autonomous analyzers for nutrients and trace metals. Uh, and we've done, you know, we've done pretty well over the last couple of years, and we got one of those guys that will soon redeploy at the uh, at the shore station here at Moss Landing, so giving us uh, real-time nutrient stoichiometry, pretty much. Uh, we've also done some work in seaweed aquaculture, and we got a fancy GC in my lab that I'm happy to use again as well to look at volatile allocarbon emissions from a bunch of seaweeds. And we also do a lot of work with CCWG and ROS as well, uh, biochar, etc., and having fun with that. So we're always keen to talk to anyone who wants to talk chemistry or run some assays or help with some assays in the lab. Uh, in terms of students, we're a pretty small lab. We have two students, Seamus, that came in fall 2022. Uh, he's our syndicate guy right now and he's soon going to become our PH guy. And we have Carol Chen, which we now call the Iron Lady. Uh, she's going to be developing a new analyzer for iron and looking at upwelling dynamics as well as the impact of narrow and wide shelves on the impacts of iron into the aquatic zone in the bay. And I'll finish with a fun fact about the chemical oceanography lab because we are the only lab in North America that operates without a fume hood. And as of this week, <laughs> without any GI water. But we now have trace metal clean floors leading to our lab, so it's fantastic. Hi everyone, Scott Hamilton, uh, head of the ichthyology lab. So we study those vertebrates in the ocean that are not furry and don't have feathers, the things with gills and fins. Uh, the type of work that we do is studying coastal ecology of fishes from species interactions up to ecosystem level processes like nutrient cycling. Uh, we do a lot of work studying climate change in kelp forests and estuaries of the Elkhorn Slough, studying the effects of MPAs and marine protection and fishing on fish populations, and to keep getting dragged into aquaculture, fishes, shellfish, and seaweeds. So some current projects to highlight. Uh, for a while we've been studying the effects of ocean acidification and hypoxia on reproduction, physiology, behavior, and gene expression in fish. Most of that's with Cheryl Logan and our students. Uh, we do a lot of work with colleagues at NOAA using geographic variation of fish life histories to uh, and their trophy ecology to help aid fisheries management and stock assessments. Uh, we're involved in a lot of marine protected area monitoring, so we, we uh, do a lot of fish uh, sampling in the surf zone, and then we lead the statewide program for the California Collaborative Fisheries uh, Research Program. And then in aquaculture, we're doing things related to bulk kelp restoration, uh, integrated multi-trophic aquaculture with abalone and seaweeds, and farming of monkey face eels, all that's with uh, Mike Graham, Luke Gardner, and Maya DeVries. You can see over there on the right, we have a very big lab group. Uh, so myself, and then I help to co-advise students with many of our research faculty here and faculty at CSUMB and SJSU. I have a postdoc and a couple of technicians in the lab. I have seven students of my own, and then there's 14 others that are co-advised. That 20, that's actually a low number for us. So we need to build this back up again. All right, people in my lab are inducted into the mysterious and enigmatic cult of the rockfish. Uh, it's not quite as bad as Scientology, but once you get in, you cannot get out. Uh, some of the people in the lab to highlight, uh, these are the brains of the operation. So Nate, my postdoc, uh, technicians, Jake, Kevin, and Andrew, who's shared. He's coming close. Here's some grad students that are working on the climate change side of things. They like to torture fish. Luke's our resident eel farmer, no longer resident. He left recently. And two new students, Jonah and Bruno, are figuring it out. Thank you. collect uh, samples statewide. Can I have a few extra seconds? <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Salvador Jorgensen. And uh, I, I, I was thinking, my, I forgot what my slides look like, but I did submit them. But they're not here. I uh, am assistant professor, a marine ecologist, um, and I just finished uh, submitting my uh, first year uh, tenure review package. Woohoo! So, um, yes, uh, I do uh, 
predator ecology, um, not with uh, that species. Uh, mostly looking right now at white sharks. We're doing population uh, dynamics. We're doing biologging, and we're looking at uh, range shifts um, uh, due to climate change. And finally, looking at uh, species interactions, how um, sharks are interacting with our otters here in the bay and beyond, and what we might predict will be happening as rain ships continue up and towards Northern California and Oregon. Uh, we have uh, two great, amazing uh, grad students so far. Duncan Campbell joined us uh, this year, and Ke Kelsey Montalto uh, is, uh, started last year, and uh, have a gaggle of undergrads uh, in the lab as well. Um, teaching a class this semester called Ocean Instrumentation. Um, 17 students are building some new technology to relay uh, asset recovery signals and uh, uh, construct some uh, shark tags. So that's about it without any visual aids, but I hope uh, you come up to me and we can talk a little bit more about it afterwards. Thank you. everyone. I'm Amanda Khan. I feel like I have the cheat sheet now with the slides. Um, so uh, I am um, a lead of the Invertebrate Ecology Lab here at MLML, where we broadly have research into the spineless animals and organisms. Um, and so various members of the lab work on these different projects. So we explore and use microscopy um, to understand feeding adaptations um, and study feeding of various invertebrates, especially sponges. A lot of the pictures here are sponge. Um, that's my particular interest and focus. Um, so members of the group are studying sponge population dynamics or through space or through time. Um, and so we have a grant proposal in for the time and for space. We have some active work monitoring um, benthic invertebrates in and outside of MPAs at sort of mid depth. Um, also, uh, we're interested in behaviors of sessile invertebrates who look like lumps on the seafloor, but when you film them and speed them up, they actually do quite a lot. Um, and so understanding the drivers of those behaviors is something that Keenan in the lab has really focused on. Um, and, uh, and then the effects of, sort of the ecological effects of invertebrates on their surroundings is the big thing. So we can do that through lab studies like up there. We can do in-situ measurements in collaboration with folks at Mbari and also diving and in the intertidal. Um, and then we have a new project we're going out to sea to study a really cool deep sea sponge reef um, in April uh, with Chad King, who's here today as well. So lots of um, exploration and ecology as well as physiology. Um, I had to, oh, they're big. Uh, I had to prune this list. There are some folks graduating, which is a really bittersweet moment for a newer faculty is seeing people move on. So we do have um, Jackson, Sydney, and Jacob who are graduating and are moving on, but active in the lab right now working um, are Keenan, working on behaviors of sponges, Sam Sherrill, who's doing a taxonomic inventory of deep sea sponges um, in the area, Celine DeYoung co-advised with Diana Steller, who's studying um, urchin, uh, urchin rotolith interactions and settlement cues, and I'm getting the walk, so I need to talk faster. So Anna studies oysters, Christian studies ecology of the benthos, and Sarah is studying jellies as food for turtles, or maybe turtles as eaters of jellies. Yeah, there's also a list of co-advised students that get there. Okay. So ne next up is Katie Lage, and she can't be here today with us, but uh, she wants me to show you a couple slides. First of all, she said she's always welcoming uh, everyone that has questions in the library. We're, we're so lucky to have such an amazing, amazing library. And uh, the other thing that uh, she wanted me, and by the way, so Katie Lage is our faculty librarian, and she has two student assistants, N Nalina and Eva. And, uh, uh, there are two catalogs you can access. One is the MLML Mbari Marine Science and Engineering Collection of Prints and eBooks, Bar, uh, Marine Science, and, which includes Marine Science Engineering journals uh, online and printed and interoperably loan service. And the other one is uh, the uh, King Library Access catalog, which includes all the things you list, see listed there. Uh, 
This, the, the, the easiest thing to search both catalog, catalogs you use Google Scholar, that's what they usually do, and then, uh, you, you know, then you'll be directed to the different journals depending where, in which catalog they are. If you're working remotely, use the VPN access only when you're accessing the MLML catalog because for the, for the King Library, you can just use uh, your uh, San Jose State access. And I think that's it. Thank you, Katie. I have slides, yay, so exciting. Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Logan. I am a professor in the Department of Marine Science at CSUMB. Um, I'm also the, the faculty coordinator for Moss Landing through CSUMB, and I've been advising students here for several years now, mostly with Scott and Amanda. Um, I run the Marine Environmental Physiology Lab. Um, we mostly focus on studying the effects of climate change, changes in temperature, hypoxia, and ocean acidification on marine invertebrates as well as fish. Um, I currently have five students who are shown here. Ari Dash, who is graduating this semester, he just defended a couple weeks ago. Um, I have Nick and Katrina, who are third year students. Uh, Day Lynn, who is a second year student, and Ava and Madison, who are first year students. Um, we have a variety of different projects going on in the lab right now that fall into like three major groups. Um, the first is focused on mechanisms of heat and cold tolerance in Galapagos corals. Um, Katrina and Ava are both working on that project. Um, we also have a big project that Scott mentioned earlier, um, looking at the effects of climate change on rockfish reproduction and physiology. Um, there's a big team of us in the room right now. Um, the two that are working specifically in my lab are Madison and Daylin. Daylin's working on epigenetics, which is new to our lab. We're really excited about that project. And Madison is working on incorporating um, the results from our laboratory and field studies into a stock assessment model. Um, and then third, we have another project looking at how thermal tolerance plastic plasticity varies with life history traits in various um, marine intertidal invertebrates along the coast. Um, I've got NSF proposals in for two of these, um, the Coral Project and the Thermal Tolerance Project, um, and we're funded by California Sea Grant and Ocean Protection Council for the, the Rockfish Project, and then we have a bunch of foundation funding um, that's funding the Galapagos work as well. Um, I'm also PI of a NOAA education grant that is interested in training the next generation of NOAA workforce um, at uh, marine, or sorry, not marine, minority serving institutions. Um, so uh, I can talk to folks about that. We have a few students at Moss Landing that are funded through that program as well. Thank you. All right, well, I'm Gita McDonald, and I lead the vertebrate uh, ecology lab. Most of the research in our lab falls into two categories, physiology and then behavior and ecology. So for physiology, we focus on understanding what can the animals that Scott does not study, the furry and feathery things, um, what are their diving capabilities, and what are the mechanisms underlying them, and then we are interested in energetics, so how much does it cost to be one of these animals. We link this to their foraging ecology, life history, and ecological niche. And more recently, a lot of the projects in the lab are taking on more of a conservation in, um, kind of slant. Three projects that just are wrapping up and papers will be coming out soon are looking at experimental disturbances in elephant seals and characterizing the physiological response to them, heart rate logging in toothed whales, so we got some heart rate data from beaked whales, and energetic costs of disturbance in otters. Two other in this category that are ongoing are cumulative impacts of multiple stressors on elephant seals and foraging ecology um, and habitat use of emperor penguins. And then for people and projects, um, we have uh, Sierra who will be finishing up her thesis looking at the impacts of disturbance on um, behavior of sea otters and rafts. Emma is wrapping up her thesis looking at how harbor seals used Elkhorn Slough and how it's changed over the last 30 years. We have um, two people looking at impacts, kind of stressors on elephant seals. One, how they respond to killer whale sound. Another, impacts of tagging. Um, and then we have two students using isotopes to look at foraging strategies in elephant seals. And then the NSF Penguin Project has two students working on that. Um, and we have two postdocs, so looking at things like diet, feeding, and uh, habitat use. I'm Diana Steller, and I help 
uh, run the research diving program here and also I'm on the teaching faculty. And I have a great support group that I work with, uh, Jess Franks who and Logan Early. Jess is the student TA with our classes and Logan Early is uh, helping coordinate the effort with San Francisco State in our dive program. And Matt Hess, the, latter, the prior two just finished their Maui instructor. So we have a wealth of information here and support in our dive program. We also work closely with marine operations with the intention of the giving, supporting our using diving as a safe tool to conduct research. And I feel like my primary job is to support all of you how to get in on and under the water safely and be productive diving. We do that through classes and training. We have a few coming up right now and we work with people throughout the bay. I also am a scientist and um, have a, a, some students right now that are finishing up and my main research interests are uh, invertebrate algal interactions. I encourage all of you to retain the being curious and really the one thing is ask. Ask around here for help. Ask to get in, uh, go on field trips. Ask if you can get to go in the lab and learn about the techniques that they have. We have a lot of opportunities coming up. Nate Spindell, if you raise, raise your hand right there, and Wes Heim over in the corner. They have some upcoming research projects that are going to need divers. And so those of you that were just trained, those are opportunities. We also have a UROC. Um, there's funding for UROC this summer. So for you grad students that want help and support, they can be supported. We have um, rescue and diving luncheon coming up soon to review all of you and get you up to date for summer diving. And we have a CPR class in case any of us need CPR. <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, my name is Mike Wood and I'm the newest faculty member here at Moss Landing. I started, I guess, a year ago now, even though it seems like I'm still super new. Uh, my personal research interests are in glacier ocean interactions and sea level rise, and recently I've been uh, interested in primary productivity, mostly in the Arctic. Uh, for my research, I use numerical modeling, mostly with the MIT GCM and also a lot of remote sensing uh, methods. Uh, but I also love to go to the field and take in situ measurements. Uh, in addition to my appointment here at Moss Landing, I'm also, uh, I have a joint appointment with the Department of Co Computer Science at uh, San Jose. Uh, and so um, I teach classes, I teach classes here, uh, and I also teach computer sciences there. So, um, for example, I'll have to run out right at one to go teach my virtual lecture in computer science. Uh, as I'm very new, I, um, I don't have any graduate students yet, but I am starting up what will be called the Computational Oceanography Lab. Yeah. People have been calling it Compost, and yeah, I'm, I have a petition here that uh, we should be calling it the Cool Group. And um, yeah, so the, the, the two main focus areas for the Cool Group will be uh, thinking about uh, uh, modeling using numerical models and also uh, remote sensing. Um, and if you're interested in remote sensing and you're a student, there's a fantastic remote sensing class that's offered uh, in the fall. Well, thank you. We're moving to group number two. So the first um, presentation is from Scott Benson, who's gonna, not going to be here, so he sent me a few words to share with you. So uh, Scott Benson is a marine turtle eco ecologist, and he works closely with our ex-director, Jim Harvey, and with Upwell, so I'll say a few words about that. And so they study Western Pacific leatherback turtles, distribution of abundance, population structure, movement, foraging ecology, health assessment. And that you can see the Sheila B or one of our vessels where we are trying to harass one of those turtles. Uh, this is part of why we are, they are doing this, this work, is because those are critically endangered species and they also move across boundaries. And so they are, that in yellow, those are some of the reasons why they are uh, following, tracking those animals across the Pacific Ocean. And you'd like me to mention that although this project has been led by NOAA Fisheries, we, with recent support from the local uh, NGO Upwell, 
this has been a, a Moss Landing legacy project since 2000, when he was still a graduate student at Moss Landing. So their data have helped reveal the origin of leatherback turtles to the forage on the West Coast, distant Western Pacific beaches, and contributed to the identification of critical habitats in the U.S. West Coast water. Their project is the only in-water leatherback turtle monitoring project in the Pacific and one of the few in the world. Their success is largely due to the contribution and capabilities of the Marine Operation Department at Moss Landing Marine Labs. And shout out to Captain John Douglas, who has been an integral, integral part since the inception of this work. And Dr. Jim Harvey, who's now Emeritus Professor at Moss Landing. So thank you, Scott. Um, Scott and Bye. I'm done. All right. Next up. Hi everyone, I'm Holly Bowers. I am research faculty down at Norte at the end of the island, and we have the Environmental Biotechnology Lab. So we have two students. We have uh, Olivia Pollock, who's working on impacts of agricultural microplastics on the growth of marine phytoplankton for her thesis. And then Hannah McGrath on the right is working with Sudanichia, so investigating Sudanichia community composition and toxicity with respect to changing water temperatures out here in the bay. And we also work with Ross's group, and it's an EPA-funded project. You'll probably hear some about the bioreactors, and so we take the water that comes out of those bioreactors that's been cleaned up and compare how the phytoplankton respond to that cleaned up nutrient water versus the dirtier water that went in and didn't get cleaned up. And so we have a, ver a variety of analyses we're moving through right now, including nutrient drawdown by these phytoplankton, toxin response, as well as growth metrics. And Hannah's continuing our weekly monitoring at the Monterey uh, Wharf. And so that's part of CalHabMap, which is this whole network of stations along the coast. So we can all get a snapshot of what's going on every Wednesday out there in terms of phytoplankton. I should mention we have an emphasis on phytoplankton, especially HABs in our, uh, in our lab. And so she does counts and looks at water quality parameters. And we archive samples for things like nutrient and toxin analyses later so we can get a bigger picture of what's going on. And recently, we just got an award from uh, NOAA Ocean Tech Transfer to do uh, some comparison of a lower end imager compared to the sort of Cadillac version, the um, imaging flow cytobot. So that's going to be pretty cool. We'll have it next to an IFCB at the Santa Cruz Wharf, as well as out in San Francisco Bay with some of the USGS cruises and we'll be supporting uh, things like the local aquarium and aquaculture and doing lab experiments uh, with this fun new toy kit. Thank you. Thanks, Ivano. Hi, everybody. I'm Dustin Carroll. Uh, my background is in physical oceanography and numerical ocean modeling. Um, I'm a project director here, a PI, and I'm also a, an affiliate scientist at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which is down in Pasadena. I have a pretty large group right now. We have two main research focuses. Um, the first one is I'm the lead developer for NASA's ocean biogeochemistry model, which is called Echo Darwin. So we're focused on assimilating ocean carbon observations and providing the best estimates of how the carbon sink is changing in time. The second is uh, ocean ice biology interactions. So I maintain an active field program. Nowadays, it's primarily focused on summer research in Greenland. So since 2012, we've been doing field campaigns there. Um, I have currently seven NASA funded projects and three NSF, so we have a lot of work. Um, the group is myself. We have two postdocs at JPL, several PhD students, and many colleagues. Another really exciting direction I wanted to point out that we've gotten into in the last year is connecting with industry and stakeholders to do marine carbon dioxide removal modeling, or MCDR. So we're now working uh, primarily with these stakeholders with Google. They're using our Echo Darwin model to do ocean alkalinity enhancement experiments. We're partnering with the company Running Tide, which is doing macroalgae sinking and ocean alkalinity. The Climate Foundation in San Diego, they're doing kelp afforestation, and also the USGS, uh, two colleagues there. And we're simulating uh, basically the land ocean aquatic continuum and ocean biogeochemistry models. So one thing I wanted to point out is these industry groups are really excited about our modeling efforts and we're now writing papers with these companies and also partnering with them uh, to secure funding and write code for the model. Thank you very much.
Hi, I'm Dave Ebert, and I run the uh, Pacific Shark Research Center here at Moss Landing Marine Laboratories. And uh, this last uh, year has been uh, pretty productive as usual. We had a, about a dozen uh, peer-reviewed publications and uh, have finished one book on the sharks raised in chimeras in North America, which will be out on May 7th of this year. I'm currently working on my 37th book on the ghost sharks of the world, which is kind of cool because one of the co-authors there, Dr. Jenny Kemper, is a former student of Mo here from Moss Landing. It's the first time I've had an opportunity to work on a book with one of my former graduate students here. Um, continuing to do uh, uh, work on the Lost Sharks program globally. Uh, this past year we've been in uh, Peru and Ecuador and uh, South Africa. Continuing to work with graduate students in, in Peru, Ecuador, South Africa, uh, Mozambique, Tanzania, uh, uh, Australia, and Indonesia. And also working with some high school students at, uh, in South Africa as well, providing some mentoring. Also, I, uh, I gave a keynote plenary uh, presentation at the uh, Southern African Sharks and Rays Symposium a few months ago. And uh, also usually had our usual thing where uh, appearances on Shark Week last year, uh, Shark Fest also was on the uh, uh, Shark Week podcast. Luke Tipple uh, did another couple other high profile podcasts with uh, Guy Kawasaki. And I continue to co-host the uh, Beyond Jaws podcast. If you haven't seen it, check it out. We're on all the usual platforms. We've had probably half a dozen former Moss Landing uh, students on the program over the last uh, three years or so. And um, so that's kind of been our year. So, good. All right. So, um, our, thanks, Dave. Our next speaker. Hi everyone, I'm Brooke Fulkerson. I am the data analyst for the Central Coast Wetlands Group. We are a research affiliate of Moss Landing Marine Labs and our mission is to coordinate the advancement of wetland sciences and management on the Central Coast. Um, we, have, we work with two students right now at MLML and we are also a watershed stewards program placement site. So we get two interns that rotate annually. Some of our research and project focus areas, you can see here up, up on the board, but we mostly focus on assessment, monitoring, and restoration of habitats, including wetlands, estuaries, and dunes. And we do have a scheduled dune ice plant pulling day um, on February 26th. We've extended that invite to students, and we'd love to have you guys come out and pull some ice plant with us. So talk to me afterwards if you're interested. To touch on a few of our uh, bigger projects, we have the California Estuarine MPA Monitoring Program. This is something that we developed with um, research partners across the state um, in order to um, assess the condition and quality of estuaries statewide in order to address um, critical man management questions. We also have the Moro Coho Slough Management and Enhancement Project. This has been ongoing for a while and we have successfully 
implemented and addressed most of the action plans, including reducing uh, nutrient concentrations throughout the slough. We have the HABS project that Holly touched on a little bit, and so we work closely with her in order to um, find different ways to reduce nutrient loading in our watersheds that go out into the ocean, and then in turn create harmful algal blooms. And then we also have our multi-benefit land repurposing project, and this was a grant that was given to us in order to acquire irrigated agricultural lands to turn them into multi-benefit land repurposing projects, such as floodplain restoration, uh, treatment wetlands, and um, groundwater recharge basins. And that is all. Talk to me afterwards. Hi, all. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Wes Heim. I uh, started here at Moss Landing as a graduate student. Now I help run the Marine Pollution Studies Laboratory down at North Bay. Um, we've got a fairly long list of projects going on right now. Dai kind of plugged some um, need that we have with divers and fishing. That's the first two projects there. So if you're interested in hook and line ocean fishing or spear fishing or eelgrass surveys. We're going to have a lot of, of work on those this, this coming summer. Um, you know, there's kind of um, some other long-term long projects listed there. Um, um, the work we do is statewide, so we're in kind of all kinds of habitats, looking at habitat health, looking at how contaminants move through the environment. Uh, so we're in the deserts, mountains, estuaries, ocean, um, looking primarily at trace metals, mercury, um, as well as other um, contaminants. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities for if you just want some field exper experience or laboratory experience, or if you're looking maybe for a project. Uh, there's a lot of these projects have a lot of potential for you know, you to collect data and get paid for it and, and carve, a, carve a thesis out of it. Um, we've got an open door, so if you're interested in what we do, come down to Norte. We've got a lot of in instrumentation down there that we just would let you jump on if you need to analyze some samples or something or just want to talk about contaminants. Um, want to point out the staff and um, thanks to them. We have a, a great group. We we're just talking uh, before the meeting, like we have I think five of us that have been here for 25 plus years, another three that are like 20 plus years, so just a huge kind of experience uh, that you can draw on. And then these are some pictures of us out in the field doing, doing our thing. So thanks everybody. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Chad King and I am a research ecologist at Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary and I escaped, I mean finished here as a student back in uh, 2003 in this room actually. Um, just a little background on the sanctuary, it was designated in 92 and a lot of moss landing scientists, particularly like Dr. Greg Kaye, were certainly integral into the inception of that, really with the primary focus of the prohibition of oil and gas exploration off our coast here. It's one of 15 national marine sanctuaries and two national monuments. Uh, we have four teams, research, education, resource protection, and uh, an operations team. Uh, we do have a couple of panels that we work with um, quarterly, a research activity panel and a sanctuary advisory council, uh, various representatives that help us with both of those, both management and also research uh, focused stuff. And our main prohibitions, of course, are oil exploration, seafloor alteration, uh, discharge, and there's a few other things as well. Um, we also have, oh yeah, and I, got to point that out there. We do have uh, three alumni here, not just myself, but uh, Andrew de Vogelaire and Erica Burton as well, the former students. Uh, in the past, we worked with Moss Landing on quite a few projects, Wind to Wales back in the 90s and 2000s, beachcombers in the past and currently. Um, I head up all of the offshore and deep sea uh, exploration and research that we do. So we have a predator prey uh, research cruise we do about every two years at Davidson Seamount. In the past, we've done uh, DNA barcoding with Dr. Uh, John Geller. Uh, Dr. Sarah Smith uh, was an intern of ours back in the mid-2000s, and of course Dr. Amanda Khan. In the back there, I've invited her on to a couple of our um, Nautilus cruises where we made these amazing discoveries of an octopus garden, warm water coming out of the seafloor, a whale fall. Um, it was just pure luck, but that's turned into quite a bit of stuff, including a lot of publications, including Science last August with Dr. Jim Berry, 
Uh, Planet Earth 3, we had a four or five minute segment, and then I'm currently working on a chapter in a book with uh, David Attenborough, so it's just exploded everywhere. It's been incredible. Uh, faculty, of course, on the RAP, Dr. Uh, Kaye again was really integral with that, and most recently a student, uh, Cindy McDermott, with the lost shipping container that was discovered by Ambari. Uh, in the future, we still need help with Davidson predator prey um, uh, exploration. We need kind of a marine mammal or seabird person for this May. If anyone's interested, hit me up on the email. I've also started a microplastics project with a grant we got from OPC and Sea Grant, and then uh, we've got a big kelp project we're working on. So we do a lot of active diving and stuff like that. Thank you. Okay, so our next uh, presenter is Val Lud, and she cannot be here. So let me just uh, say a few words. Since I'm a geologist, she's actually graduated in 1972 here, so we go back to the remote past of the place. She's been a, a part of this institu institution for much of the last 50 years, and um, she specializes in biological fishery oceanography, so larva fish, krill, sobs, multi-species, zooplankton assemblages. And uh, uh, I'm gonna, uh, so this is some of this work that she's been done here in the past, and she's been advising and co-advising several students, and her more re most recent focus is in looking at the abundance and variation of the atheropod Carinaria japonica. And don't ask me what it is, because I have no idea. But they look cool. And, um, and then the other project is about, about the small scale biological and physical variability of midwater depths in the eastern tropical North Pacific oxygen minimum zone. So she's a really uh, part of our institution, and I'm thankful that she's still sticking around after all these years. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, if you guys want to reach out to her, she'll be very happy to help you on any of those things. And that's as much as I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Val. All right. It's funny because this is also. No, that's uh, Rachel Brooks. This was actually my slides from like three or four years ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it, it, that's okay. I'm Marco Segala. I run the other half of the Marine Pollution Studies Lab group down at uh, Moss Landing. We're associated with Wes in the Upper Norte area. Um, so we, we don't do analyses like for trace metals like Wes's group, but we do conduct field monitoring as well as um, data management and data reporting. That, that's kind of our more of our focus. So we do like to get out in the field and, and sample. So we work with a lot of different agencies, uh, private researchers, uh, industry, uh, NGOs. We work with CF Pacific Industries to sample their streams for bioassessment. Um, San Francisco margin, so we had work in 2023. We were collecting sediment and prey fish. And then we also will be doing the EPA coastal condition work in 2025. That's a nationwide coastal sampling that we've been doing since 1997. And then, as uh, you heard earlier, we're going to have the uh, San Diego uh, SAV eelgrass project happening this, this year. And uh, Justin Gill sent an email out to the students list this morning so if you guys want to talk about that, um, I'm going to be part of that um, as well. And then once we uh, collect these samples and work with other people, we like to turn it into information. So we do a lot of data management. Uh, we work with the state uh, seeding program, California Environmental Data Exchange Network. It's a lot of surface water uh, data. And then we also work with industries and uh, like uh, SPI and the Delta um, Delta Regional Monitoring Program to make sure that their data is defensible and sound. And then we also perform data verification and validation. And then we like to turn that data into visualization. So we have a Central Coast uh, data navigator if you want to look at uh, data that's found on the Central Coast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So uh, I guess that I'm also speaking for Rick Starr. 
and uh, uh, so you can't be here with us today. Um, Rick Starr in the Fisheries and Conservation Biology Lab have been affiliated with the Ichthyology Lab for the last 30 years. And Rick will be retiring when his last two students have finished, so don't finish, and he's going to stick with us forever. Hopefully this semester. Molly Alvino has been studying uh, barotrauma in rock fishes, and Jake Todd has been using stereo video cameras to survey fish communities around the Monterey Peninsula. Uh, those are some of the benefits provided by research faculty. And uh, the scientists who are affiliated with the most learning provide students and faculty with a wealth of opportunities for both students and faculty. You already heard from some of our colleagues. And Rick encourages faculty to bring on new affiliates and encourages students to seek them out for increased opportunities. And uh, uh, he gave me kind of a, a, some of the numbers you see they, there that he funded about more than 50 students. He brought more than a, a million dollars a year to Moss Landing for the last many years, um, and so on. So it's really an impressive amount of uh, research and, uh, and funded uh, research here that he brought to Moss Landing. So thank you, Rick, and we'll see you around, stick around, and we'll retire. All right. So uh, I have a slide from Alison Steampert, but unless I'm blind or I don't see her here, and uh, I thought she, so I apologize because I, I maybe she told me she wasn't coming because we changed the date of the of the seminar. So, uh, but you know, Alison uh, is a, you know she works on bioacoustic and behavior. Maybe uh, Gita can be more um, informed than I am. But you can look at the slides with me and uh, see how, you know, she's looking at sound travel in the ocean. And so, you know, she's studying how those species communicate and navigate and forage using sound. And uh, so that's her on the left side, individual acoustic behavior of baleen whales, biologue technology for acoustic behavior, marine soundscapes. And uh, uh, Jack Barkowski is one of our collaborators that works here in the same for you. And uh, yeah, thank you, Alison. And finally, the last speaker for today is Nate Spindle. There you are. Your, your last talk. Oh, thanks for sticking around. Um, I go by Nate to my friends, so you guys can all call me Nate. I'm a postdoc here. I just started about six months ago in Scott Hamilton's lab, um, in the ICH lab, and I have, uh, I'm lucky to be able to analyze the amazing CCFRP data set, looking at uh, spatial and temporal patterns of fisheries performance uh, as a function of MPAs, habitat, characteristics, and, and life history traits of fish. Um, Starting next month, I'll be uh, transitioning to uh, a different postdoc fellowship through NSF um, that was funded to look at um, impacts of multiple uh, environmental drivers on the performance of sea urchins. Um, so in this uh, very easily and readily interpretable model, as you can see, um, it's very simple. Um, but uh, my goal is to um, in integrate uh, the influences of multiple dr overlapping drivers on uh, the performance of individuals and mechanistically modeling uh, that uh, up to higher or levels of organization uh, through the lens of energetics. Um, and as Dai uh, mentioned, I am looking for students and, and collaborators to work with me uh, in the field, in the lab, and, and on modeling together. So thanks a lot. All right, so that was impressive. It's one o'clock. So I really want to thank everybody for being perfect. This is really working well. And uh, no pressure, but it works. So we look forward to hearing from you on the updates next year. But for now, we are done. Thank you so much for attending. Do you want to? Oh, and please uh, get some sugar in case you're missing some. And a happy Valentine's Day. Go out there and party. Let's go party. <laughs>